Hello and welcome, I'm Roy Lewis Photographer and I hope you've been enjoying my videos and today we're going to be looking at a very special portrait sitting with His Royal Highness the Duke of Kent. The Duke of Kent is the first cousin of Queen Elizabeth II. His Royal Highness has held the title of Duke of Kent for over 76 years. Recently, I photographed the Duke's brother, His Royal Highness Prince Michael of Kent. Hearing about my work, His Royal Highness commissioned a portrait at St James Palace in London. This was a very exciting sitting as my portrait would represent the Duke in his official duties. His Royal Highness opted for British No. 2 service dress. The Duke holds the rank of Field Marshal, which he has held since 1993. Field Marshal is the highest rank in the British Army and has been so since 1736. Since George II created the rank of Field Marshal, only 138 men have attained it. Since the end of the British Empire, the rank has become redundant, primarily because of the reduction in size of the British Army. The rank is now ceremonial. It's a gift of recognition from the Queen to senior military figures and bestowed on members of the royal family. Having photographed Field Marshal the Lord Guthrie just a few months before His Royal Highness, I was quite experienced in capturing the rank in portraiture. In 2012, Lord Guthrie was handed his Field Marshal's baton for his remarkable leadership and service in the British Army. The British Field Marshal's baton is a symbol of the magnitude of office. The figure of St George and the Dragon is at the top and at the bottom an inscription from the Queen. The body of the baton is covered with red velvet. Looking for inspiration, I started with Sir Thomas Lawrence. Known as the English Titian, Sir Thomas Lawrence had worked with Field Marshal the Duke of Wellington. His most vivid depiction is a portrait of the Duke of Wellington, which hangs in the Waterloo Chamber at Windsor Castle. Lawrence's composition is that of victory, heralding Wellington as the finest of military commanders and the liberator of Europe. Then I moved on to Singer Sargent's portrait of Field Marshal Frederick Slay Roberts. The work, similar to Sir Thomas Lawrence, is neoclassical in depiction. Finally, I turned to photography and took a look through the National Portrait Gallery's collection. I discovered photographer Alexander Bassano, who photographed Field Marshal Haig. The portrait captured in a solemn and dutiful style, and the depictions relay the finery yet obligation and commitment of Haig's role. With all this inspiration in mind, I set to work to create my own interpretation. Using a red velvet backdrop, I aim to recreate the symbolism of fire and blood that is the red coat. The British military uniform associated with energy, war, danger and the strength of royal power. In directing His Royal Highness, I opted for a series of dutiful and solemn expressions. These best representing the Duke who has performed public duties on behalf of his cousin the Queen for over 50 years. The positions I directed for the sitting are reflective, shooting from a low angle to make His Royal Highness look prominent and tall. To me, preserving the detail is very important. This is indeed a history portrait, a portrait of a member of the royal family, and thus I use very harsh lighting and shadows to bring out the detail. Backdrop-wise, I opted for collapsible backdrops, using a black collapsible and also a burnt orange Lasterlite collapsible backdrop, which unfortunately is no longer in stock. It's been discontinued, but it's one of my favourite backdrops that you may be able to find on eBay. Lighting-wise, I wanted to keep it simple, just using one Octa softbox positioned at a 45 degree angle from the Duke's nose, around about one metre away. Camera-wise, I made use of my medium format camera, the Phase 1 645DF. I used an 80mm lens, which was set to f7.1 just to create a slight depth of field, but not too much so I could capture all the detail. 
I was pleased to present the portrait to His Royal Highness at an official exhibition in London in November of 2019. My wife Alexandra and I entertained the Duke at the Carlton Club in London. The portrait was presented and is now on permanent display at St James Palace in London. If you're interested in capturing a portrait of this style, then I recommend looking for inspiration. And I found a book recently called Symbols of Power in Art. The book encompasses everything from the legendary rulers Alexander the Great and Julius Caesar to the Tsars of Russia and the European royal dynasties of the Habsburgs and Tudors, exploring how and why they manipulated their images and the symbology they used. A closing chapter is also devoted to my personal favourite, Napoleon. So do check out this book if you're looking for inspiration for photography or even art. Don't forget to check out the links below to books and my recommended list of equipment. I'm also offering mentorship and online workshops. I hope you enjoyed today's video and don't forget to hit that like button and please subscribe for further content.